Today I want to share with you one of my favorite study strategies that I used in college and medical school to get straight A's and a 3.9 GPA and I still use today as a cardiology fellow. So if you're struggling with what you're studying, especially when you read or learn something and then the next day it's just completely gone, this may just be the exact technique you're looking for. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. In case you're new here, my name is Laksh, I'm a board certified internal medicine physician and currently a cardiology fellow. In today's two minute series, I want to break down in just two minutes a study strategy that just changed the game for me in both college and medical school residency, and even today as a full-time doctor. So we're going to put two minutes on the clock and I'm going to show you exactly how you use the whiteboard recall technique. So here are the quick five steps we're going to do in the next two minutes. The first is lecture review. The second one is the free recall technique itself. Three and four is essentially assessing and correcting what you got wrong. And then five is repeating the process. So here I have an example lecture that is on AFib. And so as you can see, this is like your typical lecture where some of the words are really wordy. Some of them are a little bit more graph based. Now at this point, ideally you have done some review of the lecture itself maybe you've gone through it, made an outline, wrote some questions down. But the first step is lecture review, which essentially means having a system of knowing what the lecture and the slides are corresponding to. So often I like to make questions from each slide and I may put them in the comment section or in flashcards or on a Word doc. You can do something as simple as in the margins of the PowerPoint itself, you can simply say the things that you wanna know from that slide later on. So for example, for this slide that's dealing with workup for AFib, you may say that the things that you wanna know are the basic workups, the EKG findings of AFib, and then maybe what to do for echo findings. And as you can imagine, as you would go through the entire lecture, you would have a list of these things that would all kind of correspond to, if you got all of them right or felt comfortable, you would pretty much have the lecture mastered. Now going into the free recall technique itself is essentially doing this from memory. So after you go through the lecture, you kind of know what your goals and outlines were. And if you aren't able to, you can just have your document of these statements or these objectives right next to you. But from memory, without looking at the slides, I would basically go ahead and try to figure out what are the basic workups. And so I'm gonna say, you probably need an EKG, you probably want a history of the patient, you want chest x-rays. I knew there was something else, but I can't remember. Maybe there's four. Maybe the EKG findings. Okay, what type of things would that patient have? And let's just go ahead and cover up everything we're doing to avoid looking at our answers. Well, they're not gonna have no P waves and it's gonna be irregular. And then I'm gonna come back and do one more. Like what's the echo gonna show? Maybe their left atrium is gonna be big. And I know there's more stuff, but I'm just learning this for the first time. So I don't really remember the rest of it. And when I'm writing, I'm not trying to write the best best handwriting. I'm just trying to get the information from my brain down to paper because then I can visibly see where I don't know something. So when I'm doing this, I'm going to put a star next to anything that I don't feel comfortable with. So maybe I know for the first and the second milestone or objective that I didn't really know what I was doing or I didn't know the answers quite well. And so now step number three is to go ahead and assess. And so I'm going to go ahead and essentially figure out where my gaps were, which we just did. And step four is going ahead and correcting. So I want to figure out what type of things that I missed. So for basic things of like, oh, like, yeah, dummy, you need a electrolytes for the EKG or the echo findings, the left atrium is specifically greater than six centimeters and their LV is also gonna be bad over time. So perfect, we went ahead and closed some of our gaps on this one slide. And so the final step is to go ahead and repeat the process. And so now again, we're going to go ahead and basically say, okay, what are the basic workups? And again, I'm quickly gonna write down, so H and P, electrolytes, TSH, and of course I want an EKG. For their EKG findings, we're gonna say no P waves, irregular, and I don't need to write the entire sentence because I just need to move forward. And for the TTE, we're gonna say left atrium greater than six centimeters and LV dysfunction. And again, I'm not writing beautiful sentences. I'm not even spelling every single letter or the word for that matter. The point is, can I get it from my brain to this paper? And if I can't, then essentially I would go ahead and say, I still don't know this, go back to the slides and fill in the gap. You would do this for the entire lecture really quickly. You would use ideally the first step of using your questions and objectives. You make this entire process a lot easier if you can have a document or flashcards or something like a spreadsheet of all the objectives or questions that you wanna be able to master from that lecture without looking at the slides for the answers per se, and then doing this free recall technique to ideally be able to get here where you can answer all of that compared to where you first were. Now again, for me, this was one of the most effective study strategies I used in med school and in college just because simply I could avoid BS myself of like, oh, I know that. And if I couldn't put it on paper, I likely couldn't do it on a quiz or a test. And so being able to quickly correct and find these gaps where you're able to go from A, B, and C and understand on places where you're not able to exactly know what B is to make that connection between two topics, this is a very effective tool that you could do every single day. You could do it once a week, once you really mastered a lecture or gone through the material, but it's super effective. Definitely give it a shot on your next upcoming quiz or test and let me know in the comment section how it works for you. Now, this was just a tip of the iceberg of all the study strategies I'd love to teach you. So if you're on 
your medical journey and you just want all the step-by-step -step nitty gritty of how to study the breakdowns of all the study strategies that I use as well as the ones that other top students have used. I break those all of those down in our study program which is also included in our med school blueprint with the rest of the programs I've ever created over the past seven years on things like how to be super efficient, how to keep your motivation and stress levels at control, how to crush your rotations, your board exams like step one, step two, step three, residency, getting into residency, and so much more. Go ahead and check out the med school blueprint just like thousands of other students have just to see the reviews and if you're interested there's a 30-day money back guarantee if you want to just give it a shot and seeing if the program is for you. And before I forget if you enjoy this style of video let me know in the comment section of what other study strategies you'd want me to kind of give a light breakdown on. Hit that like button truly does support the channel and also tells me that you guys enjoy this kind of content and want more and again if you haven't hit that subscribe and notification bell for more content just like this one. And if you enjoyed this episode right here then this video will break down all the study strategies that I use to get a 3.9 GPA in med school as well as this video right here that cut my study time in half and has now been viewed by more than a million people on YouTube. So go ahead and check those out. And as always, thank you so much for being a part of my journey. Hopefully it has a little help to you guys on yours and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.